Hi everyone, this is Miss Melton. I will be teaching first grade at Kit Mosaic next year. And today, I'm going to be doing a read aloud with you guys. Today I'll be reading a book called The Sandman by William Joyce. This book is one of my favorites. It brings me so much joy because it tells the story of the Sandman and the Man in the Moon, stories that my mom told me when I was little. This book is about how the Sandman helps the man in the moon keep children from having bad dreams by being so brave and facing his fears. I know that some students get a little scared when they have to read big words because they aren't sure what the words mean. Today, we are going to be brave together and I'm going to teach you some cool tricks to help you understand the meaning of these big words in the story. Before we start though, I wanna ask you a question. While I read the story, I want you to think about what it means to be brave. We're going to talk about this at the very end, but while I read, I want you to think, hmm, what does it mean to be brave? The Sandman by William Joyce. Of course you know the guardians of childhood. You've known them since before you can remember, and you'll know them till your memories are like twilight. The very first guardian was the man in the moon, and it was he who found the others. The man in the moon watches over the children of Earth. Like a giant nightlight in the sky, he keeps nightmares away. But when the moon is less than full and bright, who will keep the children safe at night? Let's look at this page. There's a big word on this page, and it says guardians. Hmm. Today, I'm going to help you understand words that we're not sure about. And the first thing we are going to try is looking at the other words in the page to help us understand the one we don't know. So I see the word guardians, and I know that the guardian watches over the children at night, and that they're like a nightlight that keeps nightmares away. Hmm. The guardian makes sure the children are safe at night, just like a nightlight helps you feel safe at night. I think that guardian means someone who keeps others safe. Let's keep reading. The man in the moon needed another to help him. So he searched with his telescope until he saw a face he recognized. He looked once, he looked twice. Could it be? Why, yes, it was the same fellow he'd once sent a wish to many once upon a times ago. Back when the man in the moon was just a very small boy, back in a time called the Golden Age. The sleepy little fellow's name was Sanderson Mansnoozy. You may know him better as the Sandman but he began his journey as just plain Sandy, and this is how he came to be. The golden age had been a glorious time of hope and happiness and dreams that could come true. In those days, Sanderson Mensnuzzi was the pilot of a shooting star. He lived inside his star, jetting through the endless seas of time and space, flying past countless worlds, Anyone who saw the shooting star could make a wish upon it, just as the man in the moon had done as a little boy. Sandy would then send back a dream that would help that person make their wish come true. For a wish always begins with a dream. That is why he was so sleepy. He was constantly dreaming. On this page, I noticed that they used the word pilot. This is a word that we don't see very much, so you might not know what it means. Let's look at the words around pilot and at the picture to help us find what the word pilot means. First, we're going to look at the words. I see in the words that with pilot, it says he's flying past countless worlds. So I know that Sanderson Mansnuzzi is the pilot and that he's flying. I also see in the picture a shooting star. And if you look closely, it looks like he has a wheel in front of him and he's driving it, kind of like you have a wheel in a car. 
So I know that Sanderson Mensnuzi is flying the star through space like a car, and the word says that he was the pilot of the shooting star. I think that pilot is someone who flies something like an airplane or a spaceship, or in this story, a star. Let's keep reading. But in the golden age, there was one who could not abide anything good or kind or gentle. Pitch, the king of nightmares. He had sworn to destroy sweet dreams and shooting stars, and one by one, he hunted them down. Sailing in his nightmare galleon with his dream pirates, he would harpoon the stars and drag them to their doom, hurling them into moon, planets, or even the endless darkness of a black hole. So here we have Pitch, the nightmare king, and he likes to take the stars and he's so mean to them, he throws them all over space and he doesn't want anybody to wish on them. And so it was with Sanderson Mansnuzzi and his star. They were near the shoulder of the constellation Orion when Pitch attacked. The Nightmare King lanced the star with his harpoon. For the first time, Sandy knew fear, and his fear only made Pitch stronger. Sandy could not let his star be harmed. He swerved and breached with astonishing daring and finally broke free. So on this page, the Nightmare King Pitch tries to catch Sandy's star and he gets so scared and he's not brave enough to fight back so he runs away to keep his star safe. But he lost control of his star. It streaked through space like a missile, a bullet, a wavered arrow of flame and hope. They tumbled toward a small green and blue planet called Earth. That's where we live. He was certain he would crash. He could hear the laughter of the dream pirates and he felt helpless and afraid. So Sandy's star is flying through space, going down and down and down and it's going to hit Earth and he's very scared that he's going to crash. But as Sandy plummeted earthward, he heard a thousand wishes, the wishes of children who saw his star streaking toward them. Sandy knew he must not harm a single child. So with all his strength, he guided his star away from land and over a vast sea. Just as he was about to crash, he heard a wish that seemed to come from far, far away. It was bright and clear and kind. I wish you well, was all it said. So Sandy closed his eyes and dreamed that all would be well. Sandy was going towards earth and he heard so many wishes and he didn't want to hurt the children by crashing his star into the earth, but he heard a wish that said, I hope you are well. And so he closed his eyes and he tried to make that wish come true. On this page, you can see Sandy closing his eyes and his star and dreaming that everything will be well. Moments later, they crashed into the ocean. The sky was filled with the blinding light of their impact. Then the light faded. The star had neither sunk nor exploded. It had become a sandy sort of island with long spiraling tendrils of land. At its center were a number of steep dunes and at the center of the dunes lay Sanderson Mansnuzzi. So you can see there's an island and all of these spirals are called tendrils and at the very center of the island is a dune and inside of it this glowing light is Sanderson Mansnuzzi. Above his head sand was swirling into shapes that were peaceful and soothing. The faraway wish had been granted. Sanderson Mansnuzzi was well and smiling and fast asleep. From all around came the creatures of the sea. The mermaids were enthralled by Sandy's dream man. And from that moment on, they were determined to help this little lost man, a fellow traveler, but from the ocean of the sky. So the mermaids found him 
and you're very interested in him and you want to help him. On and on, Sandy slept, and on and on he dreamed, until every grain of sand on his island contained a dream. 10,000 nights and dreams passed. Pitch had vanished, and so had the golden age. The world changed, the island changed, and Sandy changed. He fell asleep, and he slept so long that Pitch, the Nightmare King, disappeared. Don't know where he is. And the world around him changed so much because he slept for so long. Everything is different now. Then one night, a moonbeam shined down on him and he heard the voice from long ago that had wished him well. I wish that you would help, said the voice. With that, Sanderson and Snoozy finally awoke. There in the moonbeam, he could hear the man in the moon who asked, when the moon's not full and bright, would you keep the children safe at night? Sandy nodded, for if a wish was made to him, he still felt bound to answer it. So the man in the moon wished to Sandy and he asked Sandy if he would keep the children safe at night when the moon is not bright to keep them safe. And Sandy said yes. He walked across the island that had been his star. He thought and he thought and he wondered and he wondered, how could he help the children of Earth? The sea turtles came to him. Some had once belonged to children and knew of their fear of the dark. The seashells had more to tell. Countless children had held them to their ears to hear the call of the sea. So the shells had learned their secret joys and sorrows. The seashells told him that Pitch's dream pirate still roamed the night in search of sleeping children to hazard. Sandy knew that to help the children, he must once again face his ancient enemies. For the second time in his life, he felt afraid. For days and days, his restless mind would not let him sleep. Without sleep, he had no dreams, and without dreams, he could do nothing. So Sandy heard from the seashells that the Nightmare King is still alive and that he's trying to scare children with nightmares and it makes him scared because he knows that he has to stop him. And when Sandy's scared, it's hard for him to sleep. And if he can't sleep, then he can't dream. And that's how he uses his magic to help children. But the mermaids knew a way to help their friend. They came from the sea with a sweet lullaby. Dreams, sweet dreams, be in the sand you hold. They banish all the darkling fears and fill the night with gold. The mermaids are singing to Sanderson and Snoozy, kind of like your parents might sing to you at night. And he's falling asleep. And so he dreamed. He dreamed of how he would help the children of Earth. And as he did, the island began to transform. A wondrous castle grew all around him and from the castle, a great cloud of sand carried him into the sky. Let's stop on this page and look at this big word. I see the word transform. Hmm, transform is a really big word. I'm not sure what it means, but I know that I can look at the picture and the words to find out what this big word means. Let's look at the words first. I see that my book says a wondrous castle grew all around him. So the island transformed and a castle grew all around. Hmm. And when I look at the picture, I can see that the island looks different. It's gotten much bigger. There are lots of buildings now. I see the castle. I see stairs. Hmm, this island looks very different. I think that because they said the island transformed, a castle grew, and I see that the island looks different. That transform means to change. So I think we could say the island changed. 
Let's keep reading. And on this cloud, he journeyed to every land. And to every child who was sleeping, he sent a lovely dream with his dream sand. And from every dark corner of the world, the children slept unafraid, for all the nightmares were chased away. So the mermaids helped Sanderson go to sleep. That way, he could dream, and his island got bigger, and he was able to take his cloud and go around the world and save the children from nightmares with his dream sand. Chased away by the dream sand, chased up to Sandy's cloud. As they came, he grabbed each nightmare and said, you are not real, you are not true, you are nothing. And as Sandy's fear vanished, so did the nightmares. One by one, they turned harmless to golden dream sand. And for the first time in all of history of sleep on earth, there was not a single nightmare to be had. So on this page, Sandy was so brave. He was scared of the nightmares, but he faced his fears and he said, you're not real. And the nightmares disappeared. So the bad dreams are disappearing and he's not scared anymore. And he's able to help the children because he was so brave. The moon peeked through the cloudy sky and shined down upon Sanderson and Snoozy. You've granted my wish, the man in the moon said to him. Now I shall grant you a name worthy of your talents. Sandy bowed as the moon declared, from this moment on, you shall be known as his nocturnal magnificence, Sanderson Man Snoozy, Sandman the First, Lord High Protector of Sleep and Dreams. So Sanderson did such a good job that the moon gave him a nice fancy name to say what he did that was special. Now the man in the moon had his first helper. And from that night on, the Sandman had made his rounds be the sky cloudy or bright to send forth his dream sand. Now, most every night is filled with sweet dreams. It's rare for dream sand to miss its proper mark, but if it does, a nightmare might try to sneak into your dream. But you know it's not real. So when you've had a good night's sleep and a wonderful dream, you might thank your gentle friend, his nocturnal magnificence, Sanderson Mansnoozy, Sandman the First, Lord High Protector of Sleep and Dreams. A longish name to be sure, but worthy of a diligent dreamer who started his journey as just plain Sandy. Now, that we've finished the book, I wanna say thank you guys for listening to that book. I hope that you enjoyed it so much. And I remember I asked at the beginning, hmm, what does it mean to be brave? We talked a little bit in the book about how Sanderson was being so brave because he was facing his fears and fighting the nightmares to keep the children safe. I want to know, what do you think it means to be brave? I think that being brave means that you are not scared and things that usually scare you, you tell them, I'm not scared of you. And you go on and you keep trying. So like Sanderson and Snoozy, he was scared of the nightmares, but he said, you're not real. And then the nightmares went away because he was brave. I want to know, what do you think it means to be brave? Thank you guys again for listening. And I hope you enjoyed the story. I can't wait to meet everyone next year at Kip Mosaic.